What are some of the creepiest declassified documents made available to the public? Story 1. There was a declassified Soviet program where the military tried to use rabbits to psychically communicate between submarines. It was based on the premise that a mother rabbit reacts strongly when one of its offspring is killed violently, even if the mother rabbit is miles or hundreds of miles away. The program involved keeping the mother rabbits at a land-based station and killing the baby rabbits in the submarine. Message content was determined by the frequency and the strength of the reaction from the mother rabbit, which was supposedly dependent on the violence of the death. The documents were declassified a while ago but only translated in 2016. Story 2, The Black Vault. Not sure if this has been mentioned or not. I'm not scrolling through a million replies. The site is run by a guy named John Greenwald, user Black Vault, who started putting in FOIA requests when he was 15 and never stopped. Currently has what is arguably the largest privately owned collection of declassified information from the U.S. government anywhere, and the entire archive is accessible for free. Not a direct answer to your question, but anything you want to know about stuff the U.S. government was up to can be found buried in there. And he's taken the time to sort some of the more interesting stuff out to make browsing easier. Story 3, the NSA Ant Catalog. It contains a list of capabilities that the NSA and other national security administrations have been in possession of and use for the purpose of cyber surveillance. The document was created in 2008 and was made public in 2013. The technology in this document is incredible and terrifying for the idea of privacy. If you think they don't know everything, they do. These devices are everywhere. Could be on any cable, any computer, any phone, any anything. Dropout Jeep. A software implant for the Apple iPhone that utilizes modular mission applications to provide specific SIGINT functionality. This functionality includes the ability to remotely push pull files from the device, SMS retrieval, contact list retrieval, voicemail, geolocation, hot mic, camera capture, cell tower location, etc. Command control and data exfiltration can occur over SMS messaging or a GPRS data connection. All communications with the implant will be covert and encrypted. Yep, they have better access to iPhones than we'll ever get. Don't get that false sense of security that your iPhone data is safe from the government. Story 4. How about the Phil Marillion? There was this user on 4chan called UTV who frequented the sports page and made lots of posts. Just normal posts too. Nothing controversial. Anyway, he had a stalker known as the Archiver who would follow and comment on every single post of UTV. After a while, UTV would get sick of these comments and he'd tell him to get lost. But the Archiver would just respond to them too. Eventually, he started posting his own compilations of the interactions he had with UTV all over the sports page. His final post was him confessing that the people in his life found out about his obsession and he is now being monitored. But before he goes offline, he wanted to share his Phil Marillion, a 92-page document of everything he had ever made to do with UTV, and he requested that it be for UTV's eyes only. Of course, that didn't stop people from opening it. Inside were post compilations of UTV's posts, posts superimposed onto 3D models, extensive poems and sonnets, a detailed description of how their life together would be and how UTV's funeral would pan out. I'm pretty sure there were real-life details about UTV in there as well. Upon release of the document, UTV's only response was, and he contacted the police and went into hiding. Story 5, Operation LAC Biological Warfare Testing Done on U.S. Cities. Principally, the operation involved spraying large areas with zinc cadmium sulfide, which is very toxic. Many who were affected died of cancer, and the testing was never followed up on. Most of the neighborhood's genetic makeup was up for no reason and no apologies were made. My mom told me one time she was living in California. They stated they were spraying to get rid of fruit flies slash gnats. They woke up and all the fish in their tanks were bleeding out their eyes. And she also had a miscarriage a week later. That story always stuck with me and made me wonder. Story 6, Project Pluto is pretty horrific. The proposed use for nuclear-powered ramjets would be to power a cruise missile called SLAM for supersonic low-altitude missile. In order to reach ramjet speed, it would be launched from the ground by a cluster of conventional rocket boosters. Once it reached cruising altitude and was far away from populated areas, the nuclear reactor would be made critical. Since nuclear power gave it almost unlimited range, the missile could cruise in circles over the ocean until ordered down to the deck for its supersonic dash to targets in the Soviet Union. The SLAM, as proposed, would carry a payload of many nuclear weapons to be dropped on multiple targets, making the cruise missile into an unmanned bomber. After delivering all its warheads, the missile could then spend weeks flying over populated areas at low altitudes, 
causing tremendous ground damage with its shock wave and fallout. When it finally lost enough power to fly and crash landed, the engine would have a good chance of spewing deadly radiation for months to come. Story 7. The Unabomber was subjected to grueling, degrading psychological experiments while he was an underage student at Harvard. At the start of the Cold War, Henry Murray developed a personality profiling test to crack Soviet spies with psychological warfare and select which U.S. spies were ready to be sent out into the field. As part of Project MKUltra, he began experimenting on Harvard sophomores. He set one student as the control after he proved to be a completely predictable conformist and named him Lawful. Long story short, the latter half of the experiment involved having the student prepare an essay on his core beliefs as a person for a friendly debate. Instead, Murray had an aggressive interrogator come in and basically tear his beliefs to pieces, mocking everything he stood for and systematically picking apart every line in the essay to see what it took to get him to react. But he didn't. It just broke him, made him into a mess of a person, and left him having to pull his whole life back together again. He graduated, but then turned in his degree only a couple of years later and moved to the woods where he lived for decades. In all that time, he kept writing his essay and slowly... He became so sure of his beliefs, so convinced that they were right, that he thought that if the nation didn't read it, we would be irreparably lost as a society. So he set out to make sure that everyone heard what he had to say, and sure enough, Lawful's Industrial Society and Its Future has become one of the most well-known essays written in the last century. In fact, you've probably read some of it, although you probably know it better as the Unabomber Manifesto. Story 8 I think there were a lot of creepy things that came out when the East German Stasi files were released after the Berlin Wall fell. All citizens were allowed to view their own files and many were shocked to find out that their own relatives were informing them because they had no choice and various other things. A good movie about this is called The Lives of Others. Katarina Witt, two-time Olympic gold medalist in figure skating from East Germany, had a Stasi file on her starting from when she was eight years old. She even got spied on by fellow teammate Ingo Steuer, who was an active informant. Steuer's Stasi past eventually got the best of him, when he nearly got banned from the German national team for the 2006 Winter Olympic Games due to his activities. He was eventually allowed to still go, but was forbidden from wearing the German team colors. However, his reputation was restored in 2010, allowing him to wear the German uniform for the Winter Olympics. Story 9 not really a document, but a case that the Soviet Union tried to hide for a while, the Nazino affair. Here is part of an eyewitness report about it. They were trying to escape. They asked us, where's the railway? We'd never seen a railway. They asked, where's Moscow, Leningrad? They were asking the wrong people. We'd never heard of those places. We're Ostyaks. People were running away starving. They were given a handful of flour. They mixed it with water and drank it, and then they immediately got diarrhea. The things we saw, people were dying everywhere, they were killing each other. On the island there was a guard named Kostya Venikov, a young fellow. He fell in love with a girl who had been sent there and was courting her, he protected her. One day he had to be away for a while and he told one of his comrades, take care of her. But with all the people there the comrade couldn't do much really. People caught the girl, tied her to a poplar tree, cut off her her muscles, everything they could eat, everything, everything. They were hungry, they had to eat. When Kostya came back, she was still alive. He tried to save her, but she had lost too much blood. Story 10. At the beginning of this year, the US Navy was granted several patents for tech that would allow aircraft to ignore friction and inertia while being powered by a room temperature superconductor. The implications of such patents are huge because it would not only revolutionize air travel completely, it would also open up terrifying new possibilities for spaceflight. A patent by no means confirms the existence of said technology, but the U.S. Navy must consider it viable enough in the future in order to patent this tech now. That being said, the patents all expire around mid-2030, take that as you will, the most exciting section of one of the patents. It is possible to envision a hybrid aerospace undersea craft, Hawk, which due to the physical mechanisms enabled by the inertial mass reduction device, can function as a submersible craft capable of extreme underwater speeds, lack of water skin friction, and enhanced stealth capabilities, non-linear scattering of RF and sonar signals. This hybrid craft would move with great ease through the air-slash-space-slash-water mediums by being enclosed in a vacuum plasma bubble sheath due to the coupled effects of EM field-induced air-water particles repulsion and vacuum energy polarization. Story 11. 
It may or may not be documented, but is still creepy knowing this. Back during the Cuban Missile Crisis, a U.S. Navy ship was sending depth charges toward a hidden Soviet submarine. The men in the submarine thought the war had broken out, and a vote was held on whether or not they should take down the ship with a nuclear torpedo. Two captains needed to approve in order for the attack to happen. Both captains had approved, but a third man, Vasily Arkhipov, was given a vote as well. He voted no on the attack. Since the vote had to be unanimous, the attack was off the table. Creepy as f when you realize how much power men have to be able to destroy the world. Story 12, Operation Northwoods. America wanted a better shot at destroying Cuba, especially after the Cuban Missile Crisis. Bay of Pigs invasion was terrible, so the plan? Fake a terrorist attack planned and carried out by CIA operatives and frame Cuban citizens government agencies. Then America will be bound to support the destruction of Cuba. JFK vetoed this suggestion. He then tried to disassemble the CIA and fired the director. JFK was then killed and the fired CIA director went back to his job and took the lead on JFK's assassination. There are profound similarities with 911. The government didn't like certain Middle Eastern countries and wanted to go to war, but the public didn't. A terrorist attack happened and America went to war. Frightening. Story 13. CIA's analysis and assessment of the gateway process examining altered states of consciousness it talks about the research they were conducting involving human consciousness, holographic and toroidal models of the universe, transcending space and time, out-of-body experiences, and remote viewing. Even if you don't believe in this stuff, it still goes incredibly in-depth and is worth a look. Not super creepy, but still. Story 14. Well, this one isn't mentioned yet, so I will add it, but honestly, it's more dumbfounding for its potential stupidity than it's being covered up by the government. Operation Starfish Prime, once upon a time, there was a scientist named Van Allen. He was interested in rocketry and space. The Russian government had launched the first artificial satellite into space, Sputnik. Van Allen considered this to be a publicity stunt, as the only thing Sputnik did was beep. Van Allen designed a satellite for the USA that had scientific instruments on board to gather data on radiation in the upper atmosphere. He found out there were moving bands of radiation that surrounded the Earth, now called the Van Allen Belts. Later the U.S. was still fighting the Cold War against the Russians. Van Allen had made himself famous with his discoveries and had the United States military now funding his research. Here is the stupidity and mild cover-up. The U.S. military wanted to give the Russians a show of force that proved they were technologically superior as far as nuclear weapons were concerned. The military came up with the idea of detonating a hydrogen bomb in the atmosphere just to see what would happen. They went to Van Allen and told him to release a statement saying this was safe, as he was now the expert regarding radiation in the atmosphere. He told them it was a terrible idea. They didn't know what the aftermath would look like, or its effects on the population, or the population, or the chemistry it would change. They reminded him that they signed his checks and did it anyway against his advice. Story 15. During WW2, the U.S. government did racially specific tests on groups of soldiers who were locked into sealed rooms and exposed to mustard gas. The Defense Department was trying to see how useful the gas was and if it would be particularly effective against certain racial groups. The soldiers were sworn to secrecy, denied long-term medical care, and told that if they divulged these tests, even to their family or their own doctors, they'd be prosecuted to the fullest extent possible. This was uncovered by some NPR reporters and was detailed in this excellent but terrifying podcast, which has many other really interesting stories. Story 16. Weird not to see more UAP-related posts on this thread? Allow me to remedy that. I'd like to note I'm not a UFO nut, but these four materials are interesting, if not fun to read, not declassified, but a leak from Admiral Thomas Wilson named the Wilson Memo, where Wilson was in conversation with a man regarding covert U.S. government projects trying to reverse engineer craft not made by human hands. Also, he outrightly confirms the knowledge that the U.S. government is aware of active extraterrestrial phenomena. Next, we have the Nimitz Encounter, which was declassified last year and details an encounter between the USS Nimitz and UAP's USPs off of the Californian coast. Two jets were on drills and were sent to examine locations regarding strange radar phenomena. They encountered a large object below the water and a smaller object hovering above. The small object danced around the jets for around 10 minutes before both objects vanished. There's a dock, 30M here, and raw footage can be found here. 
Bob Lazar was a physicist in the 80s who apparently worked at Nevada Air Base S-4, where they were attempting to reverse engineer extraterrestrial craft before whistleblowing in 1989 on live television under the pseudonym Dennis. There's lots of information on his story, but the most concise and interesting is his recent appearance on the JRE podcast, 2H14M. The film they reference in said podcast is not as succinct. Finally, the oldest document is the Guy Hoddle memo, released by the FBI details finding a craft in the 40s at the supposed Roswell crash site, as well as three bodies. His description of the beings, though brief, is quite interesting. Story 17. In France, we had a pretty messed up case. Maybe some of you know if, and if it's already been posted, I'm sorry. It's called The Cursed Bread of Pont Saint-Esprit, literal traduction, where there was a mass food poisoning in the village of Pont Saint-Esprit. Many people fell sick during the summer of 1951, with ergotism symptoms, hallucinations, convulsions, psychosis, etc., French justice classified this as an ergotism epitome, but they didn't detect any fungus causing the illness on rye and other imported cereals. For context, France got out of the war and agriculture had lots of difficulty rebuilding itself, especially with the harsh climatic conditions during that period, so they imported cereals, though it can still be possible. Story 18. My favorite would be the Nth Country Project Report. In the 1960s, two physicists were given all unclassified information available concerning the atomic bomb to see if they would be able to design a working nuclear weapon from scratch. Spoiler, they succeeded. Story 19. Cincinnati Radiation Experiments, government-funded experiment during the Cold War era that purposefully exposed members of a predominantly African-American community to high doses of radiation up to 300-600 rads without consent. One four died within a week, three four died within a year. It wasn't made public until the 90s when the famous victims won a lawsuit resulting in the University of Cincinnati Hospital having to place a memorial to those victims. They did, then promptly destroyed the building it was on and turned it into a parking garage. The memorial was quietly given a new home in an alcove behind the hospital, out of sight, covered by bushes, and in the shadow of the parking garage. Story 20 WikiLeaks CIA Vault 7 from what I remember, the takeaways were, the CIA can hack any modern car and override the ABS braking system and fire suppression system. The CIA can hack any computer and insert files while leaving zero trace of being there or leave fingerprints to make it look like another country did it. Imagine there's actually an honest politician out there. They get a phone call telling them to open a file they never had before in their computer that had heinous images or videos. That politician is now blackmailed into voting however they want. The worst part, they lost this hacking technology, and it is now out there in the world. No one knows who has it, or how many people governments do. Story 21. The leaked Russian documents detailing their weapon with the code name Poseidon a well-earned name, mind you. It's a torpedo with a 200 megaton payload, four times more than the largest nuke ever detonated, which when detonated produces a highly radioactive tsunami wave that's 1,500 feet tall and supposedly can wipe out all life within 1,000 miles of the detonation. There currently is no way to defend against it that we know of. The Russians have 30 of these. The only major American city that the Russians couldn't destroy with it is Minneapolis, but their other 7,000 nukes could take care of that. Story 22. During the last months of the war, Ishii was preparing for a long-distance attack on the United States with biological weapons. This operation, codenamed Cherry Blossoms at Night, called for the use of airplanes to spread plague in San Diego at night. The plan was finalized on March 26, 1945. Five of the new I-400 class long-range submarines were to be sent across the Pacific Ocean, each carrying three Aichi M6A Ceyron aircraft loaded with plague-infected fleas. The submarines were to surface and launch the aircraft towards the target, either to drop the plague via balloon bombs or to crash in enemy territory. Either way, the plague would then infect and kill thousands of people in the area. The mission was extremely risky for the pilots and submariners, likely a one-way kamikaze mission. A pilot under the command of Ishii Ishio Kobata recalled the plan in 1998. I was told directly by Shiro Ishii of the kamikaze mission Cherry Blossoms at Night, which was named by Ishii himself. I was the leader of a squad of 17. I understood that the mission was to spread contaminated fleas in the enemy's base and contaminate them with plague. The plan was scheduled to begin on September 22, 1945, but was not realized because of the surrender of Japan 
On August 15, 1945, Chief of the Army General Staff Yoshijiro Umezu vetoed the plan at first due to logistics reasons, but he began to re-embrace the idea around early August 1945 once the Imperial Japanese Navy said that they had a few more capable long-range submarines to carry boat planes without encountering significant problems along the way. Arata Mizuguchi, who was a Unit 731 commander in the Imperial Japanese Navy, said that only three I-400ES had been built by August 15th, but estimated that by September 2nd, two or three more would have been built ahead of schedule had the war gone on. Story 23 Pentagon Papers The Vietnam War was all about the military-industrial complex and corporate welfare for the defense industry. Vietnam kicked out the Japanese and routed the French primarily through asymmetric warfare, culminating in their absolute embarrassment of a defeat at the hands of the NVA and Viet Minh at Dien Bien Phu. The idea that the U.S. could defeat North Vietnam, the NVA, and the Viet Cong, the successor of the Viet Minh, via modern warfare was laughable. It would be like some Russian armored brigade division trying to gain control over Appalachia. Just not possible, as the locals knew the terrain and the fighters could walk freely among the civilian story 24. Operation Mincemeat during the height of World War II, two Allied deception operations were commonplace. Glyndwer Michael was a homeless man who died from eating rat poison. English war planners took the body of Glyndwer and dressed him as an officer from the Royal Marines. Captain William Martin Glyndwer Michael was carrying false invasion plans, showing an allied movement through Greece. He was dropped from a submarine at the perfect time to let the current carry him toward the Spanish coastline where Axis soldiers picked up the body and more the rudeness of the Greek invasion. Bletchley Park, as part of Operation Ultra, picked up communication from Axis powers that the bait that mincemeat was successful, and Axis troop movements began focusing on Greece. The Allies made their move on Sicily, which was taken substantially quicker than predicted and with fewer casualties than predicted, showed the extreme measures that the Allies took to win the war. It's a gruesome story, and the true impact of mincemeat is unknown as it was part of a larger deception campaign based around the Mediterranean, and they created a whole life around the fake officer. So when spies in London asked around, they actually got info confirming his existence, and they loaded up his wallet and pockets with things to make him seem real, like a ticket stub from a movie or play. 